The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Friday, July 14, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link to our Patreon in the description and comment section below. Milwaukee Brewers vs Cincinnati Reds Corbin Burns will get the starting nod for Milwaukee in the first game after the All-Star break. He faced the Reds on July 7 before the break and surrendered two runs on three hits and four walks over six innings Friday, striking out six and earning a win. The right-hander allowed just one base runner through four shutout frames before Joey Votto hit a two-run shot in the fifth inning. Burns has won consecutive starts for the first time since April and has given up four runs over 13 innings in those two wins after being slushed with 14 runs in his previous three outings. The 28-year-old lowered his ERA to 3.94 with a 102.39K. BB threw 107.1 frames in the appearance against Cincy and has another chance to improve upon those numbers in a rematch Friday. The National League Central leading Reds will go with Graham Ashcraft in Game 1 of this series. He earned the win last Wednesday before the break, allowing one run on seven hits and three walks over six innings against the Nationals. After allowing a run in the first inning, Ashcraft rebounded to shut out the Nats over his final five frames and earning his first win since May 28. The 25-year-old delivered consecutive quality starts after pitching to a 12.82 ERA in his previous eight outings. He will head into the second half with an ugly 6.28 ERA and a 1.59 whip and 61.35 KBB across 16 starts, 81.2 innings. On June 2, the Brewers obliterated Ashcraft to the tune of 10 earned runs over just four short innings. He hopes to have a better effort the second time around. Graham Ashcraft will start for the Reds in the opening game of this important series against the Brewers. In early June, he was lit up by the Brewers at home, giving up 10 runs on 9 hits in just 4 innings. He enters the second half with a 6.28 ERA, a 1.59 whip, and a 61.35 KBB ratio in 16 starts, 81.2 innings. Unfortunately, I do not trust him against a Milwaukee team that has his number and the Reds' number. The Brewers have won 10 of their last 13 games against the Reds and 9 of their last 11 road games against their NL Central rival. This is a big series for both teams, and I trust Corbin Burns and his track record a lot more than Ashcraft. I predict that the Brewers will win Game 1 on the road. Corbin Burns will get the starting nod for Milwaukee in the first game after the All-Star break. He faced the Reds on July 7 before the break and surrendered two runs on three hits and four walks over six innings Friday, striking out six and earning a win. Milwaukee is playing well heading into the second half, winning 10 of their last 15 games and one game behind the Reds for first place. Although I expect Ashcraft to run into issues facing the Brewers again, I still expect this to be a low-scoring game with Burns firing off six strong innings. Right now, it is a two-team race in the Central, and this is a very big series, so expect him to be at his best in the first game after a week off. Take the under in this game with confidence. Chicago White Sox vs Atlanta Braves Chicago is currently 38-54 and is fourth in the Isle Central and is well out of the title picture. The White Sox are currently slashing .237.295.390 which ranks 22nd, 29th, and 24th and is slashing .229.292.385 and against right-handers slash .232.291.385. Against Charlie Morton, Elvis Anderson Grandel bat .400 in 5 abs, Jimenez is 1-2, Benintendi bats .238 in 21 abs, and Anderson is 0-4. Atlanta is off to a hot start as the Braves have the best record in the majors. Atlanta is well-rounded and in the first game after the break, the Braves are set to start right-hander Charlie Morton, who's 9-6 with a 3.43 ERA, and in his last start, went 6.1 innings, allowing four hits and one run against the Rays. In his last five starts, he's 4-0 with a 2.28 ERA, and at home this season, he's 4-3 with a 4.12 ERA. The Braves are the best team in baseball, and they will be looking to make a statement coming out of the All-Star break. They will be facing the White Sox at home, and I expect them to sweep the series and win by multiple runs each game. The Braves' offense is arguably the best in baseball, and they will be facing a White Sox pitching staff that is struggling. Kopich has struggled with his command this season, and I expect the Braves to get timely hits and walks against him. Morton has been solid this season, and he should be able to get through the White Sox lineup. This is a great matchup for the Braves to beat up on a bad team. In their last five wins, four of them came by more than two runs. I predict that the Braves will win the series 3-0, and I recommend taking them at minus 1.5 runs. 
With how good Atlanta's offense is, I like the over 9 runs at minus 110 in this game. Kopic has been hit hard in some of his starts, Will Morton also gives up a few runs, which will help the over cash in this one. This season, the White Sox are 41-45-6 in hitting the over, but on the road are 21-21-4, while the Braves are 21-17-1 in hitting the over at home, and 48-38-3 overall. This Braves offense is too good for Kopic and this White Sox pitching staff which has struggled this season. Take the over 9 rune. Tampa Bay Rays vs Kansas City Royals the Tampa Bay Rays have been one of the best defensive teams in MLB, as they are fourth with a .783 ops, while averaging 5.44 runs per game. They have taken a step back on the road throughout the season, as in their 43 road games, Tampa Bay has a .260.327.445 slash line with 5.35 runs per game thus far. First baseman Yandy Diaz has been doing extremely well as he has a .923 ops with 13 homers, 43 RBIs, and 58 runs scored. Tyler Glasnow has been absolutely brutal throughout the regular season, so far as he is in the first percentile in barrel percentage, second percentile in hard hit percentage, sixth percentile in average exit velocity, and 17th percentile in XSLG. He has a four-pitch arsenal, fastball, slider, curveball, chanjuke, and his curveball has been his best pitch. His curveball has a .133 batting average and 32 strikeouts. Glasnow faced the Rays back on June 25 and did not factor into the decision as he pitched five innings and allowed one run on four hits with a walk and a season-high 12 strikeouts. The Kansas City Royals have been absolutely brutal throughout the year, as they are 29th in the sport with a .666 ops, while scoring 3.70 runs per game. They hit better at Kauffman Stadium throughout the season, as in 44 home games, the team averages 4.16 runs per game, with a .695 team ops. Shortstop Bobby Witt Jr. has been doing decently well throughout the year, as he has a .257.300.442 slash line with 14 home runs, 47 RBIs, 48 runs scored, and 27 stolen bases on 34 tires. Alec Marsh is the 14th ranked prospect in the Kansas City organization, but has not pitched enough to factor into the percentile rankings on baseball savant. He has a 12.5 barrel percentage, 89.4 mph average exit velocity, 23.8 strikeout percentage, and a 16.7 walk percentage. Marsh throws four different pitches, fastball, slider, chanjuke, curveball, and his chanjuke has been hit the most, as hitters have a .500 batting average and a 1.667 slugging percentage. It will be interesting to see how he does with an extended rest coming into this start. The Tampa Bay Rays are the clear favorites in this matchup. Tyler Glasnow has been pitching well in his last three starts, with a 2.76 ERA. Alec Marsh, on the other hand, has a 9.00 ERA in his two career starts. The Royals have a terrible 13-31 record at home this season, so Kauffman Stadium does not provide them with much of a home field advantage. The Rays' bullpen is also much better than the Royals' bullpen, ranking 10th with a 3.79 reliever ERA, while the Royals are 29th with a 5.09 bullpen ERA. Overall, I expect the Rays to cover the run line in this game. Neither offense has been doing too well as of late, as Tampa Bay is scoring 4.8 runs in their last 10 games, while Kansas City is averaging 3.64 runs in their previous 11 games. Throughout the last 30 days these teams are not hitting for much power. The Rays are 20th in the sport with 24 total homers, while the Royals are last with just 14 home runs in that stretch. Take the under in this game as it makes the most sense. Our total pick is under 9 runs.